This chapter is on gravitational field. It is a preview of the chapter. We will divide this gravitational field into four chapters. Gravitational field, gravitational force, the third chapter is gravitational field strength, then after that is gravitational potential. We will define what a gravitational field is, and we will also discuss the ways to represent a gravitational field. When Isaac Newton was 23 years old, he stumbled upon the universal force of gravitation. According to one story, Newton was walking in his garden and he saw an apple fall to the ground. He paused and asked himself one key question. If the apple falls towards Earth, does the moon also fall? The answer was yes. The moon is in free fall. The moon is constantly falling towards Earth, but the moon will not hit the Earth. This is because the moon orbits Earth in a circular path. There is a force of gravity acting on the moon that allows the moon to orbit Earth. The mathematics at the time Newton proposed the law of gravitation is not advanced enough to explain the trajectory of the falling moon. So what did Newton do? Newton invented calculus so that he can calculate the motion of the falling moon. Newton realized that if he could understand the motion of the moon around Earth, he would be able to understand the movement of all the planets around the sun. Newton's laws of gravitation is given by the formula F equals to G big M small m over r square. Big M and small m represent the masses of the two objects that attract each other. G is called the universal gravitational constant or simply called gravitational constant. Therefore, we will start <coughs> this chapter on gravitational force by discussing <coughs> one of the experimental methods to, to determine G. Then we will move on to discuss the method to measure the radius, the mass, and density of Earth. In most situations, the gravitational force provides the centripetal force necessary for an object to move in a circular path. Therefore, we can also equate gravitational force to centripetal force to, cal to calculate orbital velocity and hence orbital period. We will use the idea of orbital velocity and orbital period to determine a very special type of orbit known as geostationary orbit. Gravitational field strength, as the name implies, describes qualitatively and quantitatively the strength of a gravitational field. An object placed in a gravitational field will have gravitational potential and gravitational potential energy. And if the object undergoes circular motion, it will have kinetic energy as well. We will use the energy consideration to also calculate the escape velocity, which is the minimum velocity an object must be projected from the surface of a planet so that the object can escape from the gravitational field of the planet. As usual, we will end this chapter on gravitational field by using the ideas and concepts that we have learned to solve examination questions.